Hi everyone. Just a short video as an introductory to the video that we have later on coming, but uh, we wanted to talk about the course for Baseline Protocol 101 at Ivan on Tax Academy. So we have been working with Ivan for quite some time now to develop this course because he was very curious for his students, for maybe for some of you are already involved in his courses but he wanted to have a course on his academy that shows uh, what baseline protocol is. And this also includes, of course, a background behind blockchain for enterprises. So if you are interested, go to his website, go to his YouTube channel where you can find more about that. But uh, we also decided to take one episode where we discuss more about Unibright and this might be interesting for you as well. So enjoy watching this episode and uh, yeah talk to you in the telegram channel hi everyone welcome to episode number 13 of the baseline protocol 101 course at ivan's academy and today we will focus on the unibright framework now we'll explain exactly why we think unibright is the missing link right now for mainstream adoption, mainstream enterprise adoption uh, for blockchain. And this is gonna be a very interesting ride because we will talk about the integration part. Obviously the last couple of episodes, I've been talking a long time about business integration, blockchain integration. And this is one of our main points that that we focus on. Uh, But we also talk about uh, easy usability because this is an important subject and why it is so important as well. I'll explain that as well. And then we will talk about the different templates that we use. So those are the main components of, of the Unibright framework. It's the integration part, it's the easy usability for people that have no coding skills, plus it's the template part. But let's not wait any longer, let's dive into this episode. So let's start a bit nostalgic because now I go back to my childhood. I think about the time that I was 12 and my father bought a personal computer. And we were stuck with this screen that says something like you see in here, C doubled up. So what to do? Nobody had any idea what to do with it. Of course, you have to know certain commands to execute a certain program. This is basically the beginning of coding skills. So if you knew MS-DOS, you knew what to do. And, And this was the start of a new revolution that Microsoft actually started with Microsoft Windows. Now, please don't quote me on that, because it might be that Apple was actually the first one to try different windows, but we're not here to judge my childhood knowledge. But as far as I know, this is how it all started. You can see here on the left side, we went from MS-DOS to Windows. I think this is Windows NT. And for me, it was great because finally I could just click on something. And I could look with my eyes and I could see where I was going. If I wanted to go to paint, I could paint something and I could even draw something on images, which was really great. And I had no idea how to do that when we had MS-DOS. This was a revolution in in computing business because it opened up the door for everyone to start working with a personal computer without any knowledge beforehand. And this is the most important thing because you did not need any skills of programming or executing commands if you used windows and this was this was a great revolution but now with blockchain we're stuck here so we can see on the left side you can see solidity code and of course you need solidity coding skills to work uh, with ethereum to create smart contracts and this is a major thing in business right now because obviously it, it is very beneficial to start working with smart contracts but not your whole company can work with that. And that's the same as when the personal computer was just invented and companies started working with computers. Most people had no idea how to handle that. And this is something that we have to tackle in the blockchain world. So to open up blockchain for for whole enterprises to use, you need not just a couple of people to work with blockchain technology as 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 if it's something outside of your your business it is it is going to be part of your business and especially if you're working with your own IT environment like what we said before if you're working with SAP or with Oracle any any other IT system that you have why can't i just fit my blockchain in there so i go log into my SAP system and i connect all the necessary documents or all the necessary requirements to certain smart contracts. 
so that not just uh, Timmy, uh, who is a blockchain developer, can develop smart con contracts, but maybe also the production manager or someone from accounting. They can fill in data in the smart contracts. And this is where we have to be going because this is the future. It should not be for a handful of people that make a lot of money, like those website developers in, in the 90s that made a lot of money. And right now, everybody can make a website. Uh, if you go to Wix, if you go to WordPress, you can just create a website on your own. You don't need any coding skills. Now, you can consider the smart contract creation. If you look at Unibright framework, a bit like WordPress for the blockchain. Of course, there's more components that we have, the integration components and the templates. And the templates is a very interesting part. And uh, I will explain to you some of the templates that we have. So let's take a look at these templates. Now, most of the use cases that will be used in business, and I think it is estimated about 80%, is repetitive. So those are things that keep coming back and keep coming back. Of course, for 20% of the cases where you have to design smart contracts for a specific use case, you will still need an actual developer. But as some of the cases are repetitive, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time and time obviously is money in business, but it takes a lot of time to create those personalized smart contracts with code. So why can't I just pick a certain template for every use case and start developing from there? And this is what we thought about uh, just to have different templates for every use case. Now you can see here uh, around my bald head, a couple of templates like batch tracing, which is the track and tracing of certain goods, for example, food, or you can have any other, like where do my bananas come from? Uh, asset life cycle, this can be uh, nice for insurance when you have a certain airplane that needs to be insured you need to know exactly uh, what are the processes that happen in the future when were certain things fixed if somebody fixed something with duct tape on the on the airplane <laughs> i think that's something that actually happened well uh, they have specialized tape but that's another story so let's not get into that too much request for quotation shipping process monitoring and you can see most of these templates or a lot of these templates are ideal for for supply chain management. And this is also one of the areas where, where Unibright focuses on because this is where smart contracts are ideal. Now you can also see multi-party approval and multi-party approval is a template that is available on our demo. And this will be an interesting thing, maybe at the end of the course where you can yourself develop your first smart contract. Well, I mean, if you have not developed a smart contract before, but this is a way for you to try out how it works. Now, these are basically our templates. It doesn't mean that these are all our templates. Well, of course, we can develop a personalized template for a certain business, but these are the use cases that, that we see are most common in, in the blockchain world. But let's go to the practical part and how to design these smart contracts on the Unibright framework. Now, the Unibright framework consists of four parts. It's the workflow designer, the contract lifecycle manager, the Unibright connector and the Unibright explorer. We will go to all four of them. And you can see on this screen behind me, you can see the workflow designer. Now, this is obviously the template, like I said before, multi-party approval, but there's different templates. Now, it, it is very easy because it, it is just a drag and drop uh, workflow designer. So you can visualize the workflow that you have within your company. This is, this is normal business process management and you can design your workflow yourself. And every company, of course, and this is ideal, every company knows their business best. They know their process best. So to hire an outside blockchain developer where you have to explain everything, how it works, uh, it costs a lot of time and it costs a lot of money. So this is the easiest way for companies to start doing that. They pick a template and they design their workflow. Now next is the contract lifecycle manager. It looks a bit similar, but this is where you basically maintain and deploy your smart contract. And the, 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 the way it works as well, it is an automatic self auditing device because all the code has already been audited. So you can see here in, in, in the bottom of the screen, you can see the green lines. Now, obviously if your smart contract is, is not designed properly, you will get a red line which says, okay, there's something still that needs to be changed before you can deploy the smart contract. 
So this is the contract lifecycle manager. Now the fourth component is, is the Unibright Explorer. Now I did not mention the third component, which is the Unibright connector, but this works behind the screen. There's even a, a, a nice added feature to, to the Unibright framework. And this is interesting because it's not something that is needed, but it's just something nice for, for the blockchain developers to look at. Because if you look at the workflow designer and if you deploy a smart contract, you can actually see the translated code. Now, because we are blockchain agnostic, which is a very important part, uh, it is also possible to change smart contracts. Let's say, for example, Ethereum is not anymore after two years, the, the main blockchain that everybody uses smart contracts for maybe something else Cardano pops its head up or you can have cross chain contracts as well. But let's say, for example, hypothetically, Cardano becomes the main blockchain and Ethereum kind of fades away. Then it is very easy for companies uh, because we will obviously integrate blockchain into the framework. It is very easy for companies to just at the click of a switch change your blockchain process and switch to Cardano. You can still see the past on Ethereum on the blockchain, of course, but now you switch to, to a Cardano. This would be a lot of effort because it would mean if you don't have the Unibright framework, you would have to hire other developers that know Cardano code. So this is an interesting feature as well. But as you see in here, this is the blockchain explorer. The Unibright connector connects off-chain systems to on-chain system, basically means that the Unibright connector is, is something which is invisible on the framework on the dashboard. But basically when you deploy the smart contract, it connects the blockchain to your ERP system. That's a Unibright connector. That is a very important component as well for baseline protocol. But let's go to the Explorer because you can see here on this dashboard, this is something that everybody can use. It is very clear. You can see, okay, let's for, say, for example, Paul from accounting approved a certain process at this time and everybody has their own signature. So this is ideal for companies because it basically means that everybody can contribute to this smart contract without needing those people with coding skills. So this opens up the door for mainstream adoption adoption at block uh, at for blockchain at different enterprises. Uh, the Unibright token is a vital part of the Unibright framework. So for every component, you need to use UBT, the UBT token. We call it the universal blockchain token because we envision the future where all businesses will basically have the Unibright framework integrated into their IT system. And you need UBT to basically work with smart contracts on the Unibright framework and also the Unibright connector, which is used right now for companies if they want to make use of baseline protocol and connect them to their SAP. UBT is needed as well. And you can see here the token calculator where there are basically four metrics where you can calculate how many tokens you need for 30 days. Obviously, there's a lot more information about the Unibright token on the website. So if you want to know more about that, please check out our website, unibright.io or go to our Telegram where most of the questions are answered. All right, that's it for now. Now looking forward to episode number 14, where we start diving into different use cases and we can see a couple of demos as well. So this will be very interesting, especially because this is the practical part of the baseline protocol. And in some parts, obviously, Unibright is needed as well. So see you next episode.